In this video, we will solve the diffusion equation using concepts borrowed from complex calculus. So let's write the diffusion equation. The derivative of a function f with respect to time is equal to the diffusion coefficient d times the Laplacian of the function f. So the function f is a function of the three variables of space x and t. And we will assume that f of x t goes to zero as the mode of x, which can also indicate as simply x, goes to infinity. So as the mode of x grows larger and larger, f of x t goes to zero. And then the initial value for f of x t, so f of x zero, is equal to the Dirac delta of x. We will start with these boundary conditions and initial conditions just, just written here. Then we will consider the Laplace transform of the function f of x t, and this is defined as integral from zero to infinity of f of x t e to the minus s t dt, and we will define this to be f tilde of x s. So it will depend on another variable s, but it will still depend on x. If you just take a look at, it, at the integral. And then the inverse transform f of x t can be written in this fashion. 1 over 2 pi i integral from minus i infinity to i infinity of f tilde of x s e to the st ds. Now we will apply this Laplace transform to the diffusion equation, this equation here. So we will apply the Laplace transform to both sides of that equation. And on the left hand side, when we take the Laplace transform of the f dt, if you integrate by parts, you can write that as s times f tilde of x s minus f of x zero. And this is of course equal to delta of x. And this will be equal to the diffusion coefficient times del squared of f tilde of x s. So we can write this as s minus d del squared times f tilde of x s equal to delta of x. Now we can apply another transform. In this case, we are going to transform this variable x. And remember that x has three components, x1, x2, x3. Whereas little s here is just a scalar. We will define f double tilde of k, a vector k s, and this will be equal to the integral over d3x, so we are going to integrate over x1, x2, x3, of f tilde of x s e to the i k dot x. This is the dot product, k dot x, like this. And the inverse transform will be something like this. f tilde of x s is equal to 1 over 2 pi cubed integral d3k f double tilde of k s e to the minus i x dot k. We are going to take the transform of both sides of that equation and what we get is s plus d k squared times f double tilde of k s equal to 1. So we can write f double tilde 
of ks in this fashion it is 1 over s plus dk squared and now we can take the inverse transform and in particular we are going to transform back from s to t so we want f let's call it f triple tilde of kt this will be the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus dk squared and this can also be written using complex calculus in this fashion it will be simply 1 over 2 pi i integral over contour let me indicate it like this over gamma I will call the contour gamma of the function itself 1 over s plus dk squared e to the st ds and what is the contour? the contour should be chosen in this way we are going to integrate over all the imaginary axes which is the usual definition for the inverse transform because we have to integrate from minus i infinity to i infinity but in this case we are closing the contour in this fashion like this and this contour is closed in such a way that it will contain the pole s equal to minus dk squared like this so it is traveled counterclockwise and by definition since you can easily see that the integral will vanish when we let the radius of this semi-circumference go to infinity you can see that the integral here will give us the residue of this function calculated at s equal to minus dk squared so the result will be simply e to the minus dk squared times t and therefore we can rewrite from this result the function f triple tilde of kt which is equal to this and then we can take the inverse transform for the variable k so if we take the inverse transform from k to x we will get back the function f of x t so this will be 1 over 2 pi cubed integral over d3k e to the minus dk squared t times e to the minus i k dot x and this integral can be written as a product of three independent integrals like this it will be the product so i will write capital pi to indicate that we take a product with the index j going from 1 to 3 and here we have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of dkj e to the minus dkj squared t minus i kj times xj times 1 over 2 pi inside this product and now we can rewrite the argument of this exponential in this fashion this can also be written as minus and then we have square root of dt kj plus i xj divided by 2 square root of dt squared plus xj squared divided by 4 dt and from this we can rewrite the product in this fashion we have product from 1 to 3 integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the minus square root of dt kj plus i xj divided by 2 square root of dt 
squared. And then here I can put the differential of the square root of dt times kj. And then out of the integral, I have e to the minus xj squared divided by 4 dt divided by 2 pi square root of dt, like this. Now, the integral is very easy to calculate because now it has become a Gaussian integral. So this differential here can also be written as the differential of this argument because I can simply add this quantity since we are changing only. So the variable is kj, which can be k1, k2, k3. But this is a constant with respect to the integral. So it's as if we were integrating something like this. Integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. Just like this. And this integral gives us the square root of pi. Hence, we get that this is equal to product with the index j going from 1 to 3 of e to the minus xj squared divided by 4 dt divided by 2 square root of pi dt. And this can be also written now if we take the product e to the minus x squared, which is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared divided by 4 dt. And then we divide by 4 pi dt to the power of 3 halves, like this. Therefore, this is our function f of x t with the, the initial condition f of x 0 equal to delta of x. So if you take the limit as t goes to 0, this will give us the Dirac delta. And if we want to be more general, so if you want an in initial condition like this, f of x0 equal to some function a of x, then we can easily find the solution because of superposition. So this can be written as integral of a of x prime, Dirac delta of x minus x prime, d3x prime, and therefore the solution will also be a superposition of this kind. This is a convolution. So the solution f of x t will be a convolution between the function a of x prime with this function here. So we can rewrite it in this fashion. It will be 1 over 4 pi dt to the power of 3 halves integral d3x prime a of x prime e to the minus, and then here we have the magnitude of x prime minus x squared divided by 4 dt, just like this.